Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cortex Tutorial. Today, we're going to learn about the Cortex Python API. To get started, first, let's go on the Kinova uh, GitHub repository under Cortex. You remember that we downloaded uh, and cloned this repository in the how to install video earlier. So if you need a reminder on how to clone this repo, please refer to that video. This repo will contain all of the examples that we try to run as well as all the instructions that we will follow to install both Python as well as the API directly on our computer to work with it. So first, let's come down here and go on Quick Start for Python users and then Python general information. Here you get the instructions on how to download and install Python. If you're under Linux on Ubuntu, for example, all you have to do is open a terminal and type in all of those instructions. If you're on Windows, you can simply click this link over here. It will download an executable. You can click, and then you can follow the install instructions. Make sure that you add Python to your path. Uh, otherwise, your command prompt later on will, won't be able to accept Python instructions. So I have already Python installed on my computer, so I will cancel this. Our links here refer to Python 3.5. But as long as you have version 3.5 or later, you'll be fine. So if you're using uh, the latest version, which right now is 3.9, that's perfectly fine as well. So now that we've installed Python properly, let's move on to installing the actual API. So let's move back to Cortex, API Python, example. And let's scroll down a little bit to the instructions in the section installed Cortex Python API and required dependencies. So first click this link over here so that you can download a .wheel file, which contains all the files that are necessary for us to run. So if you're on Linux, uh, open a terminal. If you're on Windows, you can open a command prompt. And first thing is, if you don't want to bother having to write down the relative full path name of your file, is you can cd to the appropriate directory where you downloaded the .wheel file. In my case, all I have to do is cd downloads. Now simply copy this line here. So Python dash m space pip install cortex API. You can auto complete here. Make sure that if you've accidentally uh, downloaded the dot wheel file twice, you will have a file name that's automatically filled in with probably something like parenthesis one, including a space there. And that space will prevent the installation from working properly. So now press enter. You might get a little bit more messages than what I do because my version is already installed, but it should be really clear that the installation worked properly. You might also get this warning like this. Don't worry about it. It's about pip. It's not related to the API. OK, so now we're all set up to run our examples. So the simplest way to run one of the examples is to go with your file explorer and figure out which example you want to run. So let's say we want to run move Angular and Cartesian, the example. So you can select the entire path here if you're on Windows, and you can copy it. Then back to your command line, you can do CD and right click to get the entire path. And now all you have to do is type Python. And then you can type 01, for example, dash use tab to autocomplete, and you can press Enter. And our robot is moving. So this is running the exact same examples as we did in the C++, so I, I will not go over the exact uh, detail of what's happening. But you can see that all we had to do was to find our file and type Python, name of the file, enter, and our example is running. And that's it. That's all you have to know to run Python examples. Let's now take a few moments to look into the actual code. So I've opened here the move Angular and Cartesian example. And as you will quickly see, this is the exact same example as what we've already visited in C++. So if we go down here, we eventually reach the main function. And as you can see, the logic here is exactly the same. So we create a base client using a base client constructor, which calls a router. We're using a base cyclic client to have access to the cyclic data. And we're running the exact same example. So let's do example move to home position back here, so let's move back on top. So 
this function here, example, move to on position. If you go through it, you will realize that it's the exact same syntax as what's already in the C++ examples, which means we start with the base and then we can fetch the action types. We can create a type. Uh, we're looking for a type of rejoin angles. And then we use the base object to call the, uh, the method read all actions of the reach joint angle types. And then we can simply loop and look for the one that's called home. So the entire logic there is exactly the same. And the reason for that is that there are no two separate APIs for Python and C++. We're actually creating the API using uh, the Google protobuf method, which allows us to generate, based on the same source files, an API both in C++ and in Python. This means that everything you've seen in the C++ examples, you can do in Python as well. Of course, since Python is an interpreted language, it's slightly slower than C++. So if you're trying to accomplish real time with the cyclic uh, commands, it might not be as easy to get something smooth as it is in C++. Aside from that, the other only difference between the two is that Python, uh, again, because it's an interpreted language, it does not support callbacks or asynchronous function calls. Everything else, if you've seen it in the example that's uh, covering the C++ API, you can find the exact same syntax, except we're changing all of the arrows that are used for pointers in C++, changing them for dots for objects in Python. And that's all you need to know to convert from one to the other. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified when our next tutorial video will be released. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.